That'll be good. Right, let me hear you, buddy, for a second. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> on this beautiful September morning, um, we were struck before everyone got on by how joy and sorrow so often commingle. Uh, yesterday, Vern and I celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, we were we were children when we were married. We were, we weren't children, but we were pretty young. And uh, then this morning we find out from Garnett that his niece um, was killed in a car accident last night. So, you know, we live in a world where joy and sorrow are constantly with us, walking down the road with us. And we never know which one will show up uh, that day. But it's important to remember that there is a balance to it all. That joy will come in the morning after a night of sorrow. So with that rather somber beginning, I welcome you all uh, to Virtual Church. And uh, Brian will be taking over after Ray plays the prelude. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Ezekiel. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you mortal say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is 119, 33 through 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments, and your righteousness preserve my life. A reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks for together.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This is... Uh going to be an uncomfortable sermon for me to give and I hope it's an uncomfortable sermon for you to hear because I'm going to mostly talk about redemption and repentance and those are not words that flow freely to Episcopalian mouths or ears uh, those are words from another place. We don't talk about redemption and repentance too much. Uh, when I baptize a child, when I baptize a baby, I anoint his or her head with holy oil. And I say, you are, you are sealed in the Holy Spirit and you are marked as Christ's own forever. So we Episcopalians, and in fact, all, uh, all churches of a liturgical background, uh, we, don't, we say from the beginning, they're marked as Christ's son forever. Why would there be the need to repent and to be redeemed? What would that need entail? I didn't grow up in the Episcopal Church. Uh, I grew up. First of all, in the Pilgrim Holiness Church, 
And the Pilgrim Holiness Church was, uh, I must say, a pretty frightening place to be as a child. Uh, people were sometimes slain in the spirit. So you would know someone's mother laying in front of you, twitching around. It was, it was not comfortable for me. Um, and in the Pilgrim Holiness Church, you were not marked as Christ's own forever from your infancy. You had to gain it. You had to repent and you had to be baptized then as an adult after repentance. Um, and it wasn't even that easy because in the Pilgrim Holiness Church, you had to be saved and then you had to be sanctified. The saving was your part. You confessed to God, you repented, God forgave you, you were saved. But repentance required the church to pray you through. That's how they put it, to pray you through to sanctification. Um, we didn't, I didn't grow up all of my years in that church because I'll tell you why. One Sunday, my father would never go. He was a hard shell Baptist, whatever that means. I never did figure out what that meant. Uh, but he would never go in the Pilgrim Holiness Church. He would sit out in the car and read the paper and uh, wait for my mother and I. And one day, the preacher, his name was Preacher Peck of all things, Preacher Peck got up and said, we're going to pray for that sinner now out in the parking lot. Uh, smoking his cigarettes and reading the newspaper. And I was sitting next to my grandmother, who was the pianist. And my mother came and took my hand and led me out, and we never went back. Uh, we became Methodists, uh, which my father always said, Methodism couldn't hurt anybody. Um, so I was actually, this was Mountain Methodist. So it was not the Methodist church we think of today. Uh, it was a pro quite evangelical. And um, I got saved at a, um, a revival meeting at the Methodist church. And uh, the, the preacher had scared me so much I was afraid to leave until I went up to the altar and was saved. Uh, I grew up in a very small town, so the next day at eighth grade classes, everyone knew what had happened. And um, I thought I was saved until I dropped my pencil, reached down to pick it up, and looked under Donna Coomer's dress. And I thought, oh my God, it didn't take. I'm still not saved. Uh, so that's where I grew up, in a place where repentance and um, to repent and to find redemption was very much a part of the fabric of the faith. Not so in the Episcopal Church. But all of the lessons today point to that. They point to the need to repent and the need to be redeemed. And so I decided I was going to struggle with that for a few minutes. And I ask you to struggle with me because I, I think it's important we struggle with it. Um, it's not our way exactly, but it certainly is something that needs to be thought of. Like this from Ezekiel. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in, your, in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. But if you say, but if you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. That certainly sounds like God is telling Ezekiel that he has to call people to repentance. But he has to call people to redemption. 
He has to call people out of their way. And if he does not, it's all on his head, not theirs. That should cause us pause. How often do we not call people on what they're doing? We live in a society where we almost never, you know, judge not lest you be judged is what our society says. But then in, in the, the second reading from Romans, uh, it said, let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably in, as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, not in debauchery, not quarreling or jealousy. Instead, thank the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. There's so much in the Bible about repentance. Um, and just to let you know, uh, repentant, redemption uh, first occurred in English in around 1300 to 1350 in Middle English. It was from the Old French and eventually from the Latin uh, redemptio, which means literally to buy back, to buy back, to redeem something. And repentance uh, is really from the 14th century in English and eventually works its way back to Latin. And it means to turn from sin, to feel regret or contrition, to change one's mind. Repentance, redemption. Matthew's Gospel is unique in this particular reading. Um, I have a book here called Gospel Parallels uh, that puts all the things in each of the Gospels that correspond beside of each other. It's a great thing. It saves you a lot of work. Um, and if you remember, Mark was the first Gospel. Uh, it was written a couple of decades before the next two, which were Matthew and Luke. And scholars are almost certain that Matthew and Luke, whoever they were, both had a copy of Mark in front of them. But they had other sources too, the Luke sources and the Matthew sources. Luke sources are primarily compassionate. Matthew's sources are primarily legalistic and judgmental. This is what today's lesson, that lesson about if um, a brother sins against you and you tell him and he doesn't repent, then uh, go and get two to go with you and then take him before the church. And if he refuses to listen to even them, uh, let, it, uh, let him be as a Gentile and a tax collector to you. And those in Jewish thought in that time were about the two lowest things you could be. And the only thing that comes close to that is one line in, the, in Luke, Luke 17, 3. It says, take heed to yourself. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he forget, repents, forgive him. That's it. None of that other complicated stuff about bringing the witnesses and all that. Um, so Matthew is, is, is the gospel of law. It's the gospel. Of, it's the most Jewish of the gospels. Um, I haven't mentioned John's gospel because I just haven't been with the other today. You can just sort of put it over here somewhere. Um, so how do we get out of this? How do we get out of this need? To confront, to confront sin and ask people to repent or to confront our own sin and repent. Um, it's hard. It's hard to do. And let we, we live in a society in the middle of this pandemic 
that I think many of you would agree with me is as divided as it's ever been. Uh, it is, we have taken sides, we have formed into tribes. Uh, we are in many ways in conflict with each other. Um, you, it's hard to find people in the other tribe that you can get along with. It's a it's a, not a good place to be yet. We need to be unified. We need to be brought together in some way on, on some territory that doesn't belong to one tribe or the other, but a new territory. We need to repent on both sides. I'm not just saying one side needs to repent. We need to repent on both sides of how we have shut the other out. So what is the answer to this? What are we to do? And of all places, for me, the answer comes from Paul. Um, I know this will get me in trouble with someone, but I'm not a big fan of Paul. Uh, when I was at Virginia Seminary, I decided I was a, a Petrine Christian. I was more like Peter. I made mistakes. I didn't know what was going on. Da, da, da. Paul, and the front door to Aspenwall Hall, which was the main building, was so hard to open that I told people it was a Pauline door. You just can't get in easily. But I think today in these lessons, Paul gives us the answer to how to deal with our need for repentance and redemption. Owe no one anything except to love one another. The one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you should not commit adultery, you should not murder, you should not steal, you should not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. What we are required to do, beloved, is to love our neighbor, no matter which tribe our neighbor is in. No matter which level they stand at no matter what they believe, no matter how they act. We are called to love them. And in loving them, we fulfill the law. We fulfill the law by loving. And in that love, we find redemption. In that love, we find repentance. In that love, beloved, we find God. We find God. Amen. Amen. I begin this morning with a creed from the Iona Abbey worship book that was included with our readings this morning, and you're welcome to join in and read with me, or if you'd like to just listen to the words, that would be fine. We believe in God, whose love is the source of all life and the desire of our lives, whose love was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth whose love was crucified by the evil that waits to enslave us all, and whose love, defeating even death, is our glorious promise of freedom. Therefore, though we are sometimes fearful and full of doubt, in God we trust. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves in the service of others, to seek justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth, and to share the common wealth of God's goodness. We live in the freedom of forgiveness and the power of the spirit of love and in the company of the faithful, so to be the church for the glory of God. 
Amen. As I did some research this week, I came across these life-changing prayer quotes from Positive Prayers, and I'd like to share them with you. Prayer changes everything because it releases God's wisdom into your circumstances. God not only sees where you are, he sees where you can be. Pray for wisdom. God's plans are bigger than your mistakes. Pray for wisdom and new direction. Dear God, help me to have words that are uplifting and encouraging to others. Push, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Sorrow looks back, worry looks around, faith looks up. Pray like it's up to God, work like it's up to you. When life is tough, pray. When life is great, pray. One night, a lady came home from her weekly prayer meeting, found she was being robbed, and she shouted out, Acts 238, repent and be baptized if your sins will be forgiven. The robber quickly gave up, and the lady rang the police. While the police were handcuffing the criminal, a policeman said, gee, mate, you gave up pretty easy. How come you gave up so quickly? The robber said, she had an ax with two 38s. Continue <laughs> <laughs> our prayers on page 387 with form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name may be glorified by all people. <clears throat> pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. They may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We have continuing prayers for Jim for his second eye surgery this Tuesday and safe travels for Nan and Jim and the family as on this holiday weekend and everyone who's traveling. Um, we have been asked by Kathleen at Amazing. In Grace, um, that Andy Rapp, who works there, underwent some minor surgery, which was more serious than expected, so we sh should keep him in our prayers. And um, also Chris from Amazing Grace, whose daughter Pamela, keep her in our prayers. Um, and from Deb, her son-in-law's mother, Marianne Drew, who passed away this Friday. Let's keep the Albert family, in our prayers. Last prayers for my brother who is dealing with this tragedy. Ask prayers for our children and for our pets. I also give thanks for all that we are and all that we can be through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We also give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Not only Jim and Vern, but uh, Aunt Nancy and Dick Thompson uh, had a milestone as well. And um, for our cluster churches uh, in the Mackham Network, St. Andrews, St. James, and Emmanuel, and all those who visit us um, far and near,
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For your gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Uh, those of you that have uh, um, elements of uh, bread and wine, I invite you now to take them. Uh, this morning I am using uh, one of the Eucharistic prayers for reconciliation. Uh, this seems appropriate both in terms of uh, our gospel reading and also the state of our nation at the moment. The, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we praise and thank you for your presence and action in the world. In the midst of conflict and division, we know it is you who turn our minds to thoughts of peace. Your spirit changes our hearts. Enemies begin to speak to one another. Those who are estranged join hands in friendship. And nations seek the way of peace together. Your spirit is at work when understanding puts an end to strife, when hatred is quenched by mercy, and vengeance gives way to forgiveness. For this we should never cease to praise and thank you, and so we join with all the voices of heaven as they sing forever to your glory. Holy, hey, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of power and might, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to sinners. Is the way that leads to your peace. God our Father, we had wandered far from you, but through your Son you have brought us back. You gave him up to death, to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way to one another. Therefore we celebrate the reconciliation Christ has gained for us. We ask you to sanctify these gifts by the power of your spirit as now as we now fulfill your son's command while he was at supper on the night before he died for us he took bread in his hands and gave you thanks and praise he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat it this is my body which will be given up for you at the end of the meal, he took the cup. Again, he praised you for your goodness, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink it. This is the cup of my blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It is shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Lord, our God, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection and bring you the gift you have given us, the sacrifice of reconciliation. Therefore, we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with his Spirit through our sharing of the spread and wine. May he take away all that divides us. 
May the Spirit keep us always in fellowship with all your with, with all our fellow believers. Make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You've gathered us here around the table of your Son in fellowship with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Andrew, St. James, and all your saints. In that new world, where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race, language, and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. For our prayer of thanksgiving, I want to invite you into a time of silence where you can ponder the words of the Lord's Prayer that say forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us that's the most powerful word in all the prayer book i think as Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It means in the same way that. So I want you to ponder in our thanksgiving the power to forgive, the power to be forgiven, the power and the love and the wonder of the body and blood of Christ. Let us be silent. Our love for each other is our redemption. The love of God is our salvation. And may the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our companion, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. Glory, 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 since I laid my burden down. I feel better, so much better, since 
Rosalinda burning down I feel better so much better since I laid my burden down feel like shouting hallelujah since I laid my burden down feel like shouting hallelujah since I laid my burden down I am climbing Jacob's ladder since I laid my burden down. I am climbing Jacob's ladder since I laid my burden down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. Go in peace, unless you want to stick around and say anything to anybody. Uh, he's a tough read. What's that name, Kevin, right now? Paul. Oh, Paul's a tough read. Oh, he is, yeah. <laughs> but he, has, he has great introductions to his, his stories, though. Welcome to the... Grand ballroom. Jim, <laughs> I meant to ask in the beginning. Uh, I've read, or we read something in your blog about your back. Yeah. How's it doing? It's been doing well. I think the, I, you know, I, I've had it X-rayed and it's. I don't see anything. I'm going to go to another doctor and have some more. Yes, but uh, uh, I think the problem was the two times it really it sent me once to the emergency room, once to urgent care, was because I was uh, I was asleep and I didn't feel it coming. So every other day or so, I feel a little twinge and I take a these five hundred milligram pills that Vernon found me. I don't know what they are. <laughs> And um, it, it goes can hear. And he has back problems. What? Oh. What? Leslie just explaining it to her mother. Hey, other Deb, how are you? I have to scroll around to see everybody. <laughs> uh, Ray, thank you for those songs today. These were so perfect. Mm -hmm. And a Yesu Yesu is one of my favorites. Yeah. I want it at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. So I'm um, going to say goodbye to everybody, but it's great to see you all. Good to see you here. To be together in person, but um, this is a wonderful way for us to deal with it, I think. You do a, a superb so. job, all of you. Thank you. Very much. Yes, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye. 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 bye Madge. Bye. <laughs> Devin Garnett, I, I almost did Hey Sue, Hey Sue, because you said you were going to do 602 in the Lift Every Voice and Sing book. It's 74. So I said, oh, this is not it. This is, <laughs> this is 74. So I worked on it, and I said, eh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll switch to something different. Okay. <laughs> well, the, when you did the, the one that we prepared, she was uh, looking for another one to pull in there quick, and we just couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> so, well, going to be the same thing. He's got the whole yes. world in his hand. <laughs> that just means great minds think alike. <laughs> there you go. Or, or, or that means that great minds have the musician's uh, Episcopal uh, book. <laughs> yeah. Hi, yep. Jane. It's good to see you. Hi, Ray. Hi. Oh, by the way, I did figure out where this where this uh, picture came from. It's um actually we got this in South Carolina. It's um. A place called Mount Pleasant in South Carolina. Um, I have some family close, oh, close sure. to there. Yeah, that's what that is. Beautiful. <laughs> nice, nice picture. <laughs> All right, my friends, have a good week. Everybody, have a good week.
See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. I'm going to get your uh, number from Ted, I guess, right? Yeah, or I can just email you. That'll be perfect. And then you okay. help both. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Bye. You guys are all great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Set up for next week, okay? For the Zoom? Yeah, Vi, once you get set up on that account that Ann set up for you, for us, um, get in touch with me and let's let's schedule for next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just don't, I just emailed Ann earlier to let her know it needs to be set up on my other email. So I won't, I'll wait till I have access to that, but I'll do that as soon as I, yeah, I'll send that to you. Great. All right. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. You too. See you a little around one. Bye. Sounds good, Jim. Thank you.